So Crohn's disease can present in many ways. I'll start with the more classic way that Crohn's would present. Uh, patients would describe intermittent abdominal pain. They would have intermittent loose stool. Some, if they involve the colon, will actually have blood in their stool and frequent bowel movements and urgent bowel movements. But that's a very colonic or colitis-like presentation. If you consider small bowel disease, which is quite common in Crohn's disease, then weight loss, anemia, fatigue, decreased energy, decreased appetite, abdominal pain, and change in their bowel consistency, potentially. But it's important to note that the symptoms that a patient presents with is dependent on the location of their disease. So someone who presents with rectal bleeding, frequency, urgency, the more colitis type, they could have Crohn's just of the colon. So there is a subgroup of patients with Crohn's who don't have involvement of their small intestine. And a lot of patients would say, well, I have both, and I never quite understood what that meant. And I think when you use the term Crohn's colitis, people are so used to thinking colitis means ulcerative colitis. But colitis is just a disease location. It just means that the colon is inflamed. So that's the more classic presentation. I would like to note that in pediatrics, where there is puberty and development, which is unfortunately Crohn's tends to pop up right in the most important time in this transition of, of pubertal development and adolescent, is that growth failure is one, of, is one of the most important presentations of a pediatric patient because that means that their growth is stunted. And that means that the inflammation has been around probably longer than they think and was there even before the abdominal pain started, for example. So we look at the growth chart and we can see a flattening of the growth chart, no significant weight gain over the last year, and therefore we know that there's been an impact on the absorptive capacity in a pediatric patient with their nutrition, and so we're really pressed to time to get that disease under control so that we can get them back on their growth curve, go into puberty during, their, during the stages, for example, boys, grow a little bit older than girls, so we have to know exactly where they are in that window. So that's a unique way that patients can present. Crohn's patients, I should add, can also have perianal disease, which means fistulas or skin tags or fissures or things that are classic to the perianal disease, and colitis patients don't have perianal disease. Because Crohn's disease is a systemic disease with a gut focus, we first and foremost look for systemic impacts on the disease. So this can involve anemia, uh, electrolyte abnormalities, malnutrition, deficiencies in vitamin D and vitamin B12. So these are blood tests that we do in many of these individuals. From a diagnosing the disease aspect, this is accomplished by a combination of endoscopy either colonoscopy or upper endoscopy with imaging of the middle part of the intestine that can't be seen in routine endoscopies. So I'm often asked what is the differential diagnosis of uh, Crohn's disease in patients with GI tract findings and symptoms. I always make the point that uh, both Crohn's disease and the related condition ulcerative colitis are syndromes. There's not a molecular biology diagnosis or a specific uh, test for either disease. So in Crohn's disease, you have to think through is this ulcerative colitis, if the uh, inflammation is confined to the colon, is it infectious colitis, might, be a, might it be a drug-induced colitis from uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, the symptoms of uh, Crohn's disease, abdominal pain and diarrhea can completely overlap with the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. And so you have to sort of work through that differential uh, diagnosis.